Well, hello, I'm Josh, and today I am back with another great film for you. I'm going to be talking about David Lynch's 1980 film, The Elephant Man. The Elephant Man takes place in London during the 1800s, and it's a true story based on the life of John Merrick. Now, Merrick was born with a rare physical deformity which affected his face and bone structure. And because of this, he has grown up in the freak show at a traveling circus. His nickname, The Elephant Man, comes from the story that was created, which tells of his mother being attacked by elephants when she was pregnant with him, and that being the reason why he is so deformed. A Dr. Frederick Treves, played by Anthony Hopkins, hears of him and decides to look into it. He finds Merrick weak and malnourished in a dark and dingy room, and so he has him come back to the hospital so that they can take care of him. And the film is all about his humanity and how he was exploited because of his condition, as well as how other people came to see and accept his humanity. So as you may know, this is the second film of the now acclaimed director, musician, artist known as David Lynch. But back in those days, he was seen as a relatively unproven young director, one who had done some notable arthouse films, including the now cult classic Eraserhead, which he had actually just finished spending five years working on, and was now picking up some traction at the midnight movie circuit. But still, he was far from proven enough to work with actors on the caliber of, say, John Gielgud, Wendy Hiller, Anthony Hopkins, or John Hurt. But Lynch soon found himself doing just that, as he was attached to direct the film The Elephant Man. Now, we've all probably heard stories of young, unproven directors who started out doing super low-budget films and then get picked up to do this massive Hollywood picture with big stars and then basically being trampled over by the studio because that's the studio that has all the power. But in this case, we actually have a much happier story as Lynch had a huge supporter in this film. And that support was from none other than the famous comedy actor, writer, and director Mel Brooks. And this film was actually produced under Mel Brooks's production company, Brooks Films. And Brooks would use this production company to produce more of serious films that he was interested in doing. And so the story goes that the producers of The Elephant Man had seen Eraserhead and thought he would be an interesting fit for this film. And so they showed the script to David Lynch and he was very excited to do it. And so then they had to show it to Mel Brooks. Of course, back in those days, Mel Brooks did not know who David Lynch was. He had seen signs for Eraserhead, but had never seen it. And so he said, all right, well, show me a copy of it. And if you know anything about Eraserhead, you know it's out there. As with many of David Lynch's films, it's very surreal, very crazy. <laughs> And so when he heard that Mel Brooks wanted to see Eraserhead, David Lynch knew that it was pretty much over. And during the screening, producer Jonathan Sager recalled this feeling of dread over how Brooks was going to react. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to come up with a story that I'm going to tell him at the end of the movie when he, when he hits me in the head and says, what are you thinking? You know, how could that guy do, you know? And I know Mel a little bit, so I'm thinking that's what he's going to do. So, and I'm sitting there literally in a flop sweat. I am just sitting there, you know, just waiting for it to be over. The lights come up, movie's off, and I'm afraid to turn around because I know I'm going to face something very, very painful. And I, I slowly turn around and I look at Mel, and he's sitting there and he's, he's nodding his head. I said, what did you think? And he said, I, I get it. It's, it's, it's an adolescent's nightmare of responsibility. Wow, you know, I mean, no one ever said that. You know, I mean, it was like, he says, I really like that. He said, you know, let's meet the guy. I was waiting outside the theater, and as the story goes, um, the doors flew open after the film was over, and Mel ran toward me, embraced me, and said, you're a madman, I love you, you're in. I felt I was dealing with a true artist. With, with David Lynch. I felt that he was as close to the phenomenon of life and why we're here and why we have to die as any 
artist I'd ever met. And Mel Brooks really stood by Lynch, letting him do what he wanted to with the film. He was able to use his reputation as Mel Brooks to fight off a lot of studio interference that would have likely ruined a film like this. Apparently at one point when a screening of an early cut of the film didn't go over well, EMI actually went and cut their own version of the film, but Mel Brooks just refused to look at it and said he only wants to see David Lynch's version. He was so supportive of me, I didn't have technically final cut on The Elephant Man. It was my first really, you know, it wasn't a studio picture really, it was a Brooks Films picture, but um, Mel supported me from the beginning through some very tough times uh, till the very end. And um, it gave me a break uh, in life that was phenomenal. And because of this incredible freedom and trust that he was given, Lynch was able to create this really interesting world for the film. The sets feel very grounded and realistic, and yet at other times it can be quite surreal. It has these moments like at the beginning where it's kind of recreating this legend of how the Elephant Man came to be, which are all about creating mood and tone strictly through visuals and sound. It definitely creates an interesting feeling in the audience and sets up the rest of the film. And that being said, as surreal as the beginning and end of this film is, I feel that this is also one of David Lynch's most accessible films. His films, as I said, are always very surreal and, for lack of better words, weird. And in some cases, they can be very hard to watch and even off-putting. And this film still has a lot of the trademarks that you would come to know in a lot of his films, such as showing factories, lots of creative sounds and visuals. And at several points, it has a very dreamy quality to it, which is very much David Lynch's thing. But I guess I feel like this film has a much more traditional structure to it. And with the exception of the beginning and end, it stays pretty grounded throughout the whole thing. And because of this, I feel like it's a pretty good introduction to his work. Think of this as more dipping your toes into the world of David Lynch, whereas his previous film, Eraserhead, was more of a full-fledged cannonball. But so along with the immense help that Mel Brooks provided to this film, David Lynch cited the cinematographer Freddie Francis as having a huge impact on this film as well. And I'd say with a couple glances, it's pretty easy to see why. This film just looks incredible. It's got that super widescreen black and white look to it, which I always love in films like The Innocence, which was also shot by Freddie Francis. And I found it really evokes some of those early 30s horror films like James Whale's Frankenstein or Todd Browning's Freaks. And though this isn't a monster movie by any means, I think this choice definitely makes a comment on how we view people like Merrick versus how they actually are. And furthermore, I can't help but imagine someone like Tim Burton was not hugely influenced by this film. I mean, just between the visuals and the themes and the music, it just feels right in his wheelhouse. <laughs> Curtain time! And as far as the actors go, they are all great in this. I mean, you've got the late John Hurt doing one of his greatest performances of his career, completely hidden under all of Christopher Tucker's prosthetics and makeup, and yet Hurt completely embodies Merrick through his mannerisms, his speech, and even just the way he moves. The makeup apparently took six to eight hours to apply and then two hours to remove. So it's really impressive to see this level of dedication. And of course, everyone else is great in this film as well. As I mentioned before, you've got legends like John Gielgud and Wendy Hiller, as well as greats like Anthony Hopkins, who just a few months ago won another Oscar. And of course, you can't forget some of the other actors like Freddie Jones and Anne Bancroft who are also perfect in this. And an interesting fact, the young kid that's around with Freddie Jones is none other than the actor, now director, Dexter Fletcher, who's been in movies like Guy Ritchie's Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. And now he's directing films like Eddie the Eagle and most recently the Elton John biopic Rocket Man. Upon its release, The Elephant Man came to huge critical acclaim. 
Mo Brooks kept his name pretty much entirely off the film, knowing that his reputation would likely give people the wrong idea about what kind of movie this was. And this seems to have worked because this film was huge when it came out. It was nominated for eight Oscars. It was up there with some pretty heavy hitters that year, like Ordinary People and Raging Bull. And yet out of those eight nominations, Freddie Francis was actually not nominated, which a lot of people found quite baffling. And David Lynch recalls being quite surprised at this because as I said, he thought Freddie Francis was a huge part of what made this film work. In an interesting story I heard, apparently a popular critic that was putting out his picks for what was going to win the award for best cinematography actually put Freddie Francis down, not realizing that he wasn't nominated. And despite all the nominations, the film didn't actually win any awards. But regardless, it put David Lynch on the map as the next big director in Hollywood. And the film still goes on to be hugely impactful for viewers today. And so if you'd like to watch The Elephant Man, it's actually free to stream on Amazon Prime right now, given that you have a subscription. Otherwise, you can rent or buy it from any of the usual streaming sites. And if you want to actually buy a copy physically, there are several options for you too. So as you can see, I have the Criterion Edition here. I know, big surprise. And this set comes jammed packed with tons of special features and even a booklet, which has an interview with David Lynch, as well as the transcription of an 1886 letter that was written to the London Times by John Gilgood's character from this film. His actual name I cannot pronounce, but he was the chairman of the London Hospital, and so he's actually writing about the real Joseph Merrick, who in the film and the book it's based on is known as John Merrick. But yeah, it's got tons of great bonus features, documentaries, really gives you a good history of the film as well as the actual person himself. And what's really cool is this edition was actually approved by David Lynch himself. If you know anything about the Criterion Collection, then you know that they tend to reach out to the filmmakers if they're still alive and willing to collaborate, really in order to make sure that they're showing the film as it was intended to be seen. And also for those of you who are into the 4K televisions and the 4K Blu-rays, you'll be pleased to know that there is actually a 4K version of this film as well. And that version is done by Studio Canal, who actually did the restoration that's used on this version as well. So yeah, it seems like there's some pretty big competition going out for this one. But no matter where or how you get it, you're still getting a truly wonderful film, so you can't really go wrong. And so for my comment question, I'm wondering, what's your favorite David Lynch film? You can count Twin Peaks as well, as now you can basically watch it as a really long movie. But yeah, he's a pretty interesting filmmaker, and though he's definitely not for everybody, still I'd say he does have a few films like The Elephant Man or The Straight Story, which I think most people will probably enjoy regardless. So go ahead, put your favorites in the comments section down below and start discussing. Be sure to hit the like button if you like this video and subscribe if you want to see more. Be sure to keep watching movies and I will see you later.